Hey guys, welcome to this video on level 2 uh, mechanics. In this video, we're going to be covering our momentum. Let's get straight into it. Alright, so introduction to momentum. Moment momentum is a vector quantity that describes an object's motion and directional motion given its mass and speed. So basically, a momentum depends on the object's uh, mass and speed. So if I change the mass, then the momentum is going to change, or if I change the velocity, the, mom mo the momentum is also going to change. So basically, just some basic uh, knowledge here. So it hurts more if you get ran over by a car at 50 km per hour than you are getting hit by a tennis ball at 50 km per hour. Uh, that's basically because the um, uh, mass of the car is larger than the mass of the ball. So um, when you get hit by that car, you actually experience more uh, more momentum, so that's why you feel the greater force of that car. So it's gonna obviously it's gonna hurt more. Another example, so it also hurts more if a bullet is moving at a thousand meters per second than a bullet at twenty two hundred meters per second. So basically, a faster object, uh, considering it's the same mass, a faster object is obviously also gonna cause um more force. So basically, um, it's gonna hurt more. So hence, we can come to a conclusion that uh, when someone, when something or someone has momentum, that means it both has a mass and a speed. So the formula for momentum is P equals to mv. So P's uh, momentum is um, stands for little p. So the little p here is momentum. M is the mass measured in kilograms, and the v here is velocity, which is measured in meters per second. All right. So momentum is measured in kilograms meters per second. <sighs> Right, so you know mass is measured in kilograms, and you know velocity is measured in meters per second, and you know they multiply together to get momentum, so kg and ms minus 1, you just multiply them together, you just put them together, and that's your unit for momentum. Right, so we get into some basic examples. Calculate the momentum of a butterfly, given it has a mass of 0 0.0005 kilograms, and moves at a speed of 0 0.4 meters per second. So in this question, we're going to be using our basic equation we just learned in the previous slide, which is p equals to mv. And we're going to substitute our m is uh, our m is zero point zero 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 five, and our speed is zero point four. And we're going to multiply them together. And once we multiply them together, we should get uh, zero point zero 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 two kilograms meters per second as our final answer. All right. Uh, question number two: Calculate the momentum of a car given it has a mass of one thousand five hundred kilograms and it is moving at a speed of nine meters per second. Alright, this question we're going to apply the exact same thing we just did in the last question. So our p equals to mv. And if you do 1,500 times of the 9, you should get 13,500 kilograms meters per second. Alright, so another the next point we want to cover is the change in momentum, okay? Uh, so basically, change in momentum is when I say it's like... Uh, if we change the speed or if we change the mass of an object, therefore the momentum is going to change. So that's what is meant by change of momentum. So if I speed an object up, the momentum increases. If I slow it down, it'll decrease, and etc. A change in momentum refers to an object changing speed or just, yeah, or just affect an object's momentum. According to Newton's first law, this object must experience a force in order to change its state of motion. Okay, very important here. Use this first law, the object must experience a force, okay? So, for example, an object is moving at x meters per second. Uh, I have to apply a force on that object in order to slow it down, for example. So, yeah, that's basically uh, basic Newton's first law. So, applying uh, external force in order to change an object's state of motion. Alright, so hence the formula for a change in momentum could be expressed as so the change in momentum equals the force times of the change in time. So basically, the longer I apply a certain force, the more change in momentum that occurs. So for example, if an object is coming towards me at 5 meters per second, and I'm going to press against this at, um, for example, uh, let's just say 50 newtons, uh, 50 newtons. The longer I apply this 50 newtons, the more the change in momentum is going to be, because the more time, it's the more effect that I will have on that ball. I hope that makes sense. So the longer I keep, uh, the longer I keep, um, uh, the longer I keep, um, <clears throat> sorry. Okay, so the longer I keep uh, using a force on this object, the more change of momentum is going to express. 
Alright, so another way to express a change in momentum is by finding the amount of velocity gained or lost and then applying the formula change of p equals to the mass times of the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So basically, this is just saying that if a ball was moving at this meters per second, then after a force was applied, it was moving at this meters per second. So the change in momentum can be expressed as the final velocity minus the initial velocity times of the mass of that ball, which is constant. Alright, so some basic examples here. An object is uh, 5 kilograms, it's moving at 11.5 meters per second. It slows down to 7 meters per second in the same direction. Change, uh, calculate the change in momentum. Alright, for this question, we're going to be using um, our relationship between change of P and uh, M times of final velocity minus the initial velocity. So we're going to write down our formula. <coughs> and we're going to plug in our numbers. So an object was moving at this and then slowed down to 7. So our final velocity will be known as 7 meters per second. And our initial velocity will be 11.5 meters per second. So basically, we're just going to plug all the numbers in. So mass is 5 and uh, everything else you know. So your change in momentum is negative 22.5 kg ms minus 1. So basically, we can come to the conclusion that the object has lost 22.5 kg ms minus 1 of momentum uh, due to a specific external force. All right, question, uh, question number 2. Uh, I don't know why this says 1. It should be 2. So if the force experienced by the object was experienced for 0 0.8 seconds, find the average force on the object. So basically we found the change of momentum and uh, which we, we, uh, <coughs> we experienced the change in uh, momentum, we have the time so we can find the force. So change of P equals to force times of change in time. And we plug our numbers in, we should get our force is 28.125 newtons. Alright, so re the reason I changed this to a positive 22.5 is because, um, technically, if you think about it this way, um, technically, if you think about it this way, so, no matter what, the momentum has changed by 22.5 kg ms minus 1. The negative only, only, um, represents that it's decreased by that much, because we can't really have a negative force, um, uh, it's impossible to have a negative force, but it's only representing the negative only represents the act that change direction in terms of the force. So by changing it to a positive, I'm just saying that there's um that uh, the change in momentum has been changed by this much, whether it's up or down, and therefore this much force is required to change it by this much up or down. All right, a few more um, more complex examples here. So. Consider a car with an airbag when a person experiences less or more force in a car crash with those airbag. So this is a very common question. Um, it comes up almost every year and it's always an excellence or a merit level question. 90% of the time is an excellence level question. So basically, most of the time, uh, you have to link your answer to an increase, or uh, not increase, you have to link your answer to a de- uh, Sorry, it is increase. You have to link your answer to an increase in the contact time. Okay, and... Uh, using you have to going back to your change in p formula, and the f times uh change in time. Right, so we have a look at our, my answer here. So when there is an airbag, the airbag, the airbag helps to compress when the car stops, and this compression helps increase the stopping time of the car. So if you think of it this way, an airbag comes up. The airbag comes up, and the person is going to fall onto the airbag, and the airbag is going to compress, and that compression is helping extend that amount of time that that person's coming to a stop. So, that, so when the car crashes, right, that person's going to experience a velocity that's moving forward. So he's going to have a momentum. So however, that airbag's going to compress and that's going to extend that change in momentum for a longer period of time. So you're going to really see what I'm getting here. So um, you're going to, you can see that I'm getting that increasing the contact time is going to decrease the force experience per second. So basically, uh, the change in momentum of the car will always be the same. With or without airbag. So basically, if the airbag's there or if the airbag's not there, it's actually not going to be uh, a factor in the momentum. So we're just going to consider the airbag's mass is ne negligible since it's so small. Uh, it's not going to be, um, it's going to be negligible, okay? <sighs> I can't pronounce words anymore. So basically, uh, so hopefully I understand what, what I mean. So basically, if the airbag's there or if the airbag's not there, change of momentum's the same. Okay, so, um, so it's not changed. So because P equals to F uh, times of um, a change in time, so basically um, F is inversely proportional to time. Uh, F is inversely proportional to time. So as time increases, 
and therefore the force must decrease. So average force experienced by the person each second is less, therefore less force experience, uh, hence there is less likely to be an injury. So that would be an example here. Another example that they could, they could give you is giving uh, a, a sporting example. A sporting example, you want the ball to be faster. Uh, for example, if you're playing soccer, you want to kick the ball. You want to kick the ball faster, so it's more likely a chance of going to the goal. So in that case, you're trying to increase the contact time uh, because by increasing the contact time and you're putting a specific amount of force onto the ball, by increasing the contact time, as I was saying in a previous slide, by increasing the contact time, you're applying that force for a longer period of time. So hence, you'll cause a larger change in momentum. So hence, uh, by changing a uh, higher change in momentum, hence the ball will be uh, more effective in going into the goal. And that's what you have to link it there. So you have to say that the... Uh, in the in the condition of sports, you want to be um, increasing that um, change in time, so you can increase that change in momentum of the ball, so it's more likely to be able to go into the goal. Alright, so conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum is the idea that the initial momentum in a particular system, so that's basically um, given a situation, is equal to the final uh, momentum of a system given that there are no external forces acting. Alright, so this is basically very similar to the concept of conservation of energy. So, for example, EP equals to EK. Uh, that's just assuming that none of that energy is lost. So, basically, if it's the exact same in this, in this case, we're trying to assume that the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. Given that there are no external forces acting, so therefore there's no momentum lost or momentum gained during these processes. Right, so it's it's always it's not I'm I use usually but it's always used in the application of collisions, uh. So in the calculations in the in the exam, the initial momentum of two objects will be equal to the final momentum of the two objects given that there are no external forces acting. Forces such as gravity, air drag, and friction are considered external forces. Hence, if any of those forces were acting, the momentum will not be conserved. Okay, so very important here. So for example, if uh if a question asked you this person was falling through the air. Is the momentum conserved? So in this answer, you'll say that the momentum is not conserved. And that's because there's all there's a air drag, so that's the air resistance acting on the person, and there's also the gravity force acting on the person. So therefore, you cannot say that the momentum is conserved whenever that person makes contact with the ground, because they, they have already uh, been influenced by external forces. Um... If you're, if you're looking at a frictionless surface and a person is traveling, then you could say that the momentum is conserved because the friction, which is the main external force, is not acting on a frictionless surface. So in that situation, in that specific situation, you can say the momentum is conserved. But for any non-frictionless surface, the momentum is not conserved because friction is, um, it is an external force. I have some key notes here. Momentum vectors uh, behave like velocity vectors. If there are two opposing momentum vectors opposite directions, they will cancel out and the momentum will be in the direction of the stronger momentum. So for example, I have 5, five kg ms minus 1 in the left direction and 6 in the right. So they are acting in opposite directions, so they'll try to cancel each other out. However, 6 is greater than 5, so it's, just, it's still going to cancel out, but my resulting my resultant momentum will be 1 meters per second, not 1 meters per second, 1 uh, kgms minus 1 to the right. So basically they work very similar to the vectors, uh, velocity vectors. If the two objects stick together, then the mass of that particular two objects becomes the sum of the individual masses of those objects. So for example, if I have a 5 kilogram ball and I have a 2 kilogram goal, and uh, if they join together, then I have I'll consider it as one 7 kilogram ball. So I'm going to consider it as a whole if they join together. Third note, a stationary object will always have no momentum. So um, that comes back to our P equals to MV. If V equals to zero, then momentum, no matter what, has to be zero. Anything times zero is zero. Uh, look at example one here. An object moves at 5 meters per second, uh, it's 7 kilograms, and crashes into another stationary object, which is 2 kilograms. Afterwards, the 7 kilogram object, object moves at 3.2 meters per second. Calculate the change in velocity, uh, not change, calculate the velocity of the 2 kilogram object. So here's a diagram here. So before we had a 7 meters per second, 7 kilogram ball moving to the right, and a 2 kilogram ball that is stationary. Afterwards, we have a 3.2 meters per second ball that is moving to the right, and an unknown velocity that is moving to the right also by the 2 kilogram ball. 
All right, so in this question, we're going to be uh, assuming the conservation of momentum. That's very important. So we'll go to our next slide here. So we're going to be assuming conservation of momentum. So that's our initial momentum equals to our final momentum. We got, that means that our momentum of our 7 kilogram ball plus our momentum of our 5 kilogram ball will be our PI, okay? So our PI would, uh, so P equals MV, of course, don't forget that. P equals to the momentum of the 7 kilogram ball, which is 7 times 7, is moving to the right, and times, oh, sorry, not times, and plus of the momentum of the 5 kilogram ball. But we know that that's zero because that ball is stationary. So our total net momentum of the PI, uh, initial momentum, will be 49 kilograms meters per second right. So therefore, we know that P, the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum, so we'll substitute 49 into the final momentum. So the final momentum, we should uh, figure out what the final momentum is. The final momentum is uh, 3.2 times of 7, that's the 7 kilogram ball moving 3.2 meters to the right, plus of the 2 kilogram ball moving V meters per second to the right. So that's our PF, and we're going to substitute our 49 as our PF in order to find our V value. So as a result, we should have 49 equals to 3.2 times of 7 plus of 2V, and our V value should be coming out to be 13.3 meters per second. And that's acting in the right direction. All right, example 2. When an object of mass 40 grams collides with a 30 gram object, Moving in the opposite direction, they join together and begin moving. Find the initial velocity of a 40 gram object. Alright, so here's another diagram. A 40 gram object is moving right and, an 30 ki and a 30 gram object is moving 8 meters per second to the left. They join together and the resultant is the two bolts join together and they are moving 1.2 meters per second to the left. And the question uh, wants us to find the velocity of the 40 gram, uh, 40 gram object initially. So in this question, we're going to follow the exact same procedures, okay? So we're going to find our PI, and we're going to make it equal to our PF. All right, so PI equals to PF, of course. So our PI in this case will be the 0 0.4 times the V, the V we don't know, plus of the momentum of the 0 point, of the, plus of the momentum of the 30 gram ball. Remember that mass is measured in kilograms, so you have to convert the measurement of grams into the measurement of kilograms. That's very important. So 0 0.03 times 8, that will be the momentum of the 30 gram ball. And that will be acting to the left. And that's because the velocity is to the left. Because they're in opposite directions, um, they are, like I was saying, they'll cancel each other out. So instead of a plus relationship, they'll have a negative relationship. So the momentum will be 0 0.04 times of uh, V minus 0 0.03 times of the 8. If you simplify that, uh, if you simplify that a little bit, it will be... Uh, sorry, never mind. Forget what I just said. So, uh, working out our final momentum, our final momentum uh, will be our two boys, our two balls joined together, and if, uh, two balls joined together. That will be the the mass of the resultant will be the two masses added together. Will be the mass of that uh, considering that mass of that one object. Okay, so I'll be zero point zero three plus of zero point zero four, and uh, that's going to be times by the one point two moving to the left. So therefore, our final momentum will come out to be 0 0.084 kilograms meters per second, and that will be acting in the left direction. Alright, so now we're going to be um, going back to our PI equals to PF. So our PI equals to BF. Um, so basically, in this case, I've made uh, 0 0.084 negative, and that's because um, we're considering the... We're considering right as positive, so we know that uh, 0 0.04 times of V, that's right. We know that's a positive, so therefore anything that's left must be a negative, okay? So you have to keep that in mind. So whatever you make positive, the negative has to be the object moving in the opposite direction. So we know that um, it's 0 0.084 kilograms meters per second to the left, and we considered right as our positive side. So therefore our left has to be negative no matter what. So we, I've substituted back as a negative, and we, all we need to do is simply solve, and that's extremely easy algebra skills here. So if we solve the equation, we should get uh, V equals to 8.1 meters per second, and that's in the right direction. Alright, so example number three. So we want to calculate the mass of the object labeled M. So we have an object moving at 6.43 meters per second to the right, that's an M kilograms. We have a 2.45 meters per second object of 1.5 kilograms also moving to the right, 
and our result is a is our mass of m object moving to the left at 1.22 meters per second and our 1.5 kilogram object moving to the right at 9.6 meters per second well once again we're going to follow the exact same steps here so we're going to find our pi our initial momentum will or will be the uh, 6.43 meters per second moving to a right multiplied by the mass we don't know. And we know that's to the right direction because the velocity is to the right. We're going to add that to the 1.5 kilogram ball which is moving 2.45 meters per second to a right. They're in the same direction so therefore we can manually just add them together. Our PF, okay, we have to consider our PF. Our PF is um, our 9.6 kilogram ball multiplied by, no, 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 sorry. Our 1.5 kilogram ball is multiplied by the 9.6 meters per second moving to a right. Added to our 1.22 um, times of the M, which is moving to the left. Once again, they're in opposite direction, so they'll cancel each other out. So we're going to be making, uh, remember on the right here, we made PI, so right is our positive vector. So whatever that's left must be negative. So our 1.22M will be a negative. So if we, um, uh, we'll look at here, so I haven't simplified it yet, so right now we will just make them equal to each other. So 9.6 times of 1.5 to the right plus 1.22M to the left equals to 3.675 plus of 6.45m to the right. So now we're going to simplify. So instead of the plus 1.22m, we're going to make that a minus 1.22m as it's moving to the left, it's opposite directions. And uh, it just comes down to some easy algebra here. So easy algebra, you should get um, 7.65m is equal to 10.725 and our m should come out to be uh, 1.4 kilograms. Moving on. Example number four, with reference to example three, calculate the force experienced by the 1.5 kilogram ball, given that the contact time was 0.04 seconds. All right, for this question, okay, this is uh, looking back uh, at a few examples ago. How we're gonna be using the exact same principles. So we're gonna find a change in momentum, use the contact time to find the force. Our change in momentum can be found by the mass multiplied by the change in velocity, which is Vf minus Vi. Alright, so our, v, our VF of the ball was 9.6 to the right, and our VI was, was 2.45 to the right. They're in the same direction, so therefore I don't need to make uh, anything negative or anything positive, so I can directly substitute these numbers in. So 9.6 minus 2.45 times of the mass of the ball, which is 1.5 kilograms. So our change of our P, which is 10.725 kilograms meters per second. Now we're going to be using our change in P equals to F change in time formula to find our force experienced by that ball. So now we, we can just substitute our numbers in. So 10.725 uh, 10 equals to 0 0.04 times of our F. So our F value would therefore be 268.125 newtons and that's acting in the right direction. Okay, so we know it's acting in the right direction because it's trying to find the force experienced by the 1.5 kilogram ball. So when the... When the um, when the 1.4 kilogram ball crashed into the 1.5 kilogram ball, it exerted a right force onto that ball. So therefore, the ball experienced by the 1.5 kilogram ball is actually also to the right. And that will be your final answer for this question. All right, so we have a final example, example five. Now we need to calculate the force that the 1.5 kilogram ball exerts on the 1.4 kilogram ball. All right, we're going to carry out the exact same procedure. So we're going to find the change in P using the mass and the change in velocity. And uh, that's going to give us... Uh, so originally we had uh, 4.45 meters per second to the right. And then we had 1.22 meters to, per second to the left. They're in opposite directions. So therefore, uh, I have to do something to the polarity of the, of the sign. So I'm going to... So once again, we considered, uh, we considered our right as our positive, so therefore we have to consider left as our negative. However, we already have negative 1.22, so we're going to add a negative, uh, we're going to add another negative. A double negative makes a positive. So that 1.22 is going to become positive 1.22. And if you add them together and times by the mass, you'll get your answer also as 10.25 kilograms meters per second. Carrying the same formula, p, uh, change in p equals to f times and change of time. We should also get our answer as uh, 600, oh, 600, <laughs> 268.125 newtons, but this time it's to the left. 
It's to the left because that 1.4 kilogram ball exerts a left force onto that 1.4 kilogram ball. So when it collides, this uh this 1.4 kilogram ball is gonna push this, trying to push this 1.5 kilogram ball to the right. However, this 1.5 kilogram ball is trying to try resist and it's gonna exert a one uh the same force, however, in the left direction to that 1.4 kilogram ball. Alright, so you should be familiar with Newton's third law. Uh so Okay, so you know that the two forces are the same in magnitude, but in opposite directions. So this is Newton's third law. And the two objects in contact experience equal and opposite reaction forces. This is true for all the collisions. So for example, when there's two objects colliding, there's two objects colliding, one object's going to experience, uh, for example, an X amount of force to the right. The other object will also experience an X, op an X Newton's of force, but instead to the left. So basically, op opposite reaction forces. So basically, uh, putting it into a practical point of view, uh, if you if you try to punch a wall, that wall technically also punches back at you, because once you make contact with the uh, with the wall, let's say at a hundred newtons, that wall is going to exert a hundred newtons back at, back at your fist, and that's why you actually feel a bit of pain on your on your um on your uh fist. Okay, if the wall didn't exert this hundred newtons force, you wouldn't feel the pain. Okay, so that's the practical point of this Newton's third law here. Alright, so that's basically rounding off our momentum topic. However, I do have a bonus for experts here at the end. Bonus for experts. Alright, so given three objects colliding and two joining together, and the other is not joined together, give a general equation for Z in terms of Y, X, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So looking at this diagram below, we have three objects. Uh, one object, A meters per second to the right, uh, B kilograms. Another object is c meters per second to the left, and it's traveling at uh, traveling at c meters per second to the left, and it's d kilograms. And our third object is z meters per second to the right, and it has a y kilograms. After the collision, two objects join together, and that's the b and d, and they're traveling at a combined speed of e meters per second. Our y kilogram ball is uh, has changed directions, and it's now moving at an f meters per second in the left direction. So you, do, you can't figure out a numerical answer, however, I just want to give you, uh, I just want to give an equation for, um, I want to give an equation for Z, uh, and Z in terms of Y, X, A, B, C, D, and F, okay? So that's what I want to do. I want something Z equals to something. Part 2. Uh, using a generalized formula and physics concepts, explain what would happen to the E, so what would happen to the E meters per second if the C meters per second was decreased. So you have to explain using your uh, formula that you found in part one. And uh, once again, there's two Afghan cookies for whoever, whoever can leave the comment with the correct answer down there first. Um, all right, so as always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, if you liked the video, please smash the like button. If you have any feedback, uh, like always, leave it in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thank you, bye.